Hi folks, welcome. Um, just here in my kiln shed. I uh, I fired this kiln last night. Uh, we finished about um, we finished actually about 1:30 in the morning. So yeah, I keep a little uh, a little chart here and um, plotting the a graph, you know, of temperature against time. Um, and then I write some comments and then I fill in the results afterwards. Uh, it was about a 10 hour firing including you know a couple of hours warm up. Um, apart from that you know uh, pretty normal reduction etc. So without further ado let's get on here let's get this kiln open. This really is just going to be as it were just going to move the camera. Uh, a clip of like the first impressions. First impressions when you open a kiln. Yeah, those are always uh, sort of a f moments of um, where you, you know, you're getting all the results, the fruit of your labour, the harvest, if you like, and it's there presented to you all in one f in one at one moment when you open that lid, isn't it? All the all the glazes, all the decorations, all the shapes and forms that you've made over the previous weeks uh, are suddenly there before you. As you can see a lot of dead moths here. So um, yeah, are we right there in the picture? Good, more or less. Yeah, I'll bring the camera in a bit as we go. Let's turn on another light so we can get maximum Okay. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, this is an electric kiln that is fired now with gas. I've had here a brick on the top and I've let the kiln, I do like a fast cooling for about the first, uh, for about the first 20 minutes after the finish of the firing. This is actually still feels quite hot here. So I, I do a fast cool with this open while it's red hot and then I leave it for about 20 minutes and then I close it and I leave about a small gap of about a quarter of an inch to let the kiln breathe and it breathes like that as it cools uh, all the time right until now. So we'll just take that off. Let's just check the temperature. Let's see, we've got a temperature here of 169 degrees. Um, so, just turning the power off there, yeah, 169 degrees. So let's lift it, this is the first view. I haven't lifted it. Okay, I'm getting lots of... <laughs> Let's just bring the camera right there. So one of the first things uh, you look at, you know, when you op open a kiln is you look for the maturing of the glazes, don't you? And the other thing is, of course, one looks for, well, for us who are reduction fires, we look for the amount of reduction that we're getting in the... It's a little bit hot. A little bit hot to pick up. Some of those um, tankards that you saw me doing the other day, in fact in the last clip Ooh. so I'm looking at that you see immediately I'm, it's what's it telling me rather weak here the uh, the iron can you see not quite not quite as strong as I would like let's see if we can whip out one of these beakers well that one's a little it's come out a little, a little, a little better there, but that is rather wishy-washy. Not happy with that. 
Um, we've got here the wood ash. Kind of dribbly effect. That's my fireplace wood ash. That is, we've got a few of those bottles. Quite nice dribbly effects we've got there. Uh, some Tamaku there, I see, here. Oh, that's come out rather nice. Some little bud vases. They came out quite nicely, didn't they? So you see, in order to achieve this, what we call a celadon green like that, you need to have your kiln in reduction. Otherwise, you can't really get that that quality, that kind of effect. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there you are. You see, you get a mixture of disappointments. Like this is a little bit. A little bit disappointing for me because not quite as I wanted it. Of course, then somebody else comes along and they say, "Oh well, Simon, I, you know what? I don't really mind that. Actually, it's not a problem." So it's all. It's not that it's right or wrong. It's just what is your, you know, your your expectation. So it's always good to be a little bit uh, be a little bit philosophical about things. Don't be too sort of, you know, if it doesn't come out exactly as you want, well, there may be a reason for it. You know, like you didn't apply the pigment thick enough and therefore you've got the result. I actually had in the back of my mind when I was doing these whether that was actually going to be thick enough. And um, I got my answer. <laughs> this is a short clip, people, uh, because what I'll do is when I when I once I've got all the, the pots out of the kiln and they're cold and I can touch them properly, we will. Uh, I'll do another clip with you of a resume of all of the finished pots that are in this kiln. Okay, so uh, join me for that in the next video, and. Um, Yes, other than that, go to my website, simonleachpottery.com. A lot of these pots are going to be on the website coming up soon. And um, trim tools, if you're interested in a trim tool, send, uh, write to me and, and I'll put your name on the list. I'm going to be picking them up maybe tomorrow or Monday. So, yeah. Okay, folks. Uh, if anybody wants or is interested in a Skype one-on-one... -on -one uh, at the wheel throwing learning session uh, you might find that beneficial you basically have your clay you make your pot in front of me I give you some instructions and try to get you to improve in different areas I'm going to be putting that back up on the I think it's actually on the website uh, already but yeah so if that's something that interests you, contact me and we can do that. Hey, thanks a lot. Keep practicing. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.